Hello everybody, my name is uh, Chair Datema. I work at uh, DEDOS and I've been invited by Fondation Merieu to uh, do a webcast focusing on the question, what are processes and procedure, procedures and how do we write them? In this webcast, I will be talking about uh, that all critical processes and procedures in the laboratory need to be uh, documented to ensure consistency, uh, accuracy and reliability, or in other words, quality. I'll be talking about uh, that there are different types of uh, documents, policies, processes and procedures. Um, policies are uh, or explain what to do, the overall intent. And uh, in our laboratory, we need a quality policy when we implement a quality management system. And uh, that this quality policy needs to be included in the quality manual. Um, there are also processes that explain uh, or visualize how something happens. And then we have procedures, which are the step-by-step -step instructions on performing a single activity. And the procedures in the laboratory are uh, documented in SOPs, Standard Operating Procedures and Bench Aids. So the objectives of the this webcast are to explain what policies are, to explain uh, what processes are and how to make them, and to explain what procedures are and how to make them. And I'm also going to explain a bit about uh, the difference between policies, processes and procedures, and um, I will discuss their purpose and their role in the laboratory quality management system to assure quality. First, a bit of background information about myself. As I said, I work at uh, DEDOS, which is an organization based in the Netherlands that focuses on uh, laboratory strengthening worldwide and primarily in uh, low and middle income countries. Now, and our activities focus on all levels of laboratory strengthening. We work together with uh, national governments or national laboratory working groups to develop uh, national laboratory policies and strategic plans to really uh, strengthen the whole laboratory system in a country. Uh, and we provide assistance to individual laboratories on implementing a quality management system and everything in between. So designing and assess, uh, assessment of laboratory networks and systems, so laboratory system strengthening, and supporting uh, laboratories through training, assessments, conducting audits, uh, providing advice and mentoring on quality management, management and leadership, and also bio-risk management. Aside from that, we also uh, design and uh, maintain and implement tools for laboratory strengthening. And I will introduce to you one tool um, that we developed and uh, that we are still maintaining uh, in, this web, uh, in this webcast. Aside from that, all employees of DEDOS are, uh, have an have a academic background and for that reason we all like to do also research activities, especially focusing on uh, well, the effectiveness of laboratory strengthening activities. So contributing to the evidence base underlying laboratory strengthening. So in the laboratory, when we implement a quality management system, a key rule to follow is write what you do and do as you have written. And the reason is that verbal instructions are often not heard or uh, misunderstood, misinterpreted, quickly forgotten or sometimes difficult to follow. So therefore, all critical processes in the laboratory uh, and all the procedures need to be documented. Documentation is actually equal to standardization. By documenting validated processes and procedures, um, and ensuring that everybody always follows these documents, you ensure that processes and procedures are always carried out uh, in the same way of which you know is the correct way. And you know that this is the correct way because you validated uh, those processes and procedures. And this increases accuracy and consistency. In other words, it increases or assures quality of our laboratory services. Now, there are different types of documents used in the laboratory. We have policies, we have processes, and we have procedures. Briefly, policies are written statements uh, or a written statement of the overall intention uh, and directions defined by the laboratory management. They explain what to do in a broad and general way. And in the laboratory, we need to have a quality policy that provides the framework for a quality management system. Then there are policies. Uh, sorry, processes, which are se a set of interrelated or interacti interacting activities that transform inputs into outputs, according to the definition of ISO 9001. 
So processes explain how to do it. They describe all the steps involved in carrying out a certain activity, carrying out the quality policy, for example. And they involve a series of steps, usually occurring over a period of time. And they are easily represented in flowcharts. And then we have the procedures, which are really the step-by-step -step instructions for, for performing a single activity. And procedures are documented in standard operating procedures, or SOPs. So let's go through them in more detail. As I said, policies are written statements of overall intentions and directions uh, by the laboratory management. They explain what to do in a very broad and general way. It's really a description of the intent of this is how we are going to do things in this laboratory. And in when we implement a quality management system, we need to have a quality policy according to ISO 15189. It's really a required by ISO 15189. Now, an equality policy is really a description of the framework or provides a framework for the quality management system. And it's included in the quality manual. Now, what does ISO 15189 state about the quality policy or require regarding the uh, quality policy? Well, a quality policy uh, is a description of the overall intentions and directions of a laboratory related to quality. It is, or it should be established by laboratory management. It should be consistent with the overall policy of an organization. And it provides a framework for setting quality objectives. The quality policy should include a commitment, a, a description of the commitment uh, to good professional practice, um, a description uh, that we in this laboratory use examinations that are fit for the intended use, and that we in this laboratory are working in compliance with ISO 15189 and that we are focusing on achieving or implementing continual improvement activities to continuously improve our laboratory. It also must include the requirement that all personnel must understand the quality policy and also all the documents that are used in the laboratory. And the quality policy must be reviewed at a regular basis. And this is uh, a description of the requirements of uh, ISO 15189 edition 2012. Now the previous edition of ISO 15189, the one that was published in 2007, is a bit more prescriptive regarding the quality policy or the contents of the quality policy. It should include uh, a description of uh, the scope of the laboratory's services, um, the management statement uh, of the laboratory's standard of service, that we uh, provide uh, services that are of high standards, quality assured. It should include the objectives of the quality management system. In this laboratory, we do, uh, do the work uh, such that we assure the quality, we control the quality of our processes, and by that we ensure the quality of our processes and our laboratory result. It also must include a uh, requirement that all personnel must be familiar with the quality documentation and always implement uh, all the policies and procedures. And it should include a laboratory's uh, commitment or expression of laboratory's commitment to provide good professional practice, quality examinations in compliance uh, with the quality management system. And by that compliance, uh, the commitment of the laboratory management to comply with ISO 15189. Now we get to the processes. A process is a set of interrelated or interacting activities that transform inputs into outputs. They explain how to do it and when. And here I included uh, a process, an example of a process and a very important process, namely the primary laboratory process. So the core uh, process of the laboratory to produce a laboratory result. And this can be divided into a pre-analytical analytical and post-analytical phase. Within the pre-analytical uh, phase, the sample collection, that's what we start with. Sample transport and reception to the laboratory if the sample is not collected at the laboratory itself. Sample registration when it's arrived at the laboratory. And then the next step, the analytical phase. Sample preparation, processing, and then the examination. And then the recording of the result. And then we have the post-analytical phase with reporting of the results, dealing with the waste, so waste disposal, and archiving of everything. So 
So this is um, the primary laboratory process. Again, processes describe the steps involved in carrying out quality policies or policies. Uh, they involve a series of steps, usually occurring over a period of time. And they also can include references to certain procedures. And they are easily represented in flowcharts. Now, what I just showed you, this is an example of a very simple flowchart. And the nice thing with flowcharts is that you can use different symbols for the different types of process steps. For example, uh, here the first one is uh, can be the start or the end of the process. This is a symbol, a square or uh, with rounded corners, rounded sides. Then we have the process steps itself. Then we have these symbols with the sort of curved uh, uh, bottom here. And these can represent documents that are used or uh, that are produced in uh, the process. This can represent the decision step. And of course, in our flowchart, we need to indicate which direction the process goes by arrows, using arrows. And this is an example of a process flowchart which includes these types of symbols. So here you can see this is the start of the process. Then we get the first step. Then the next step, which is actually a decision step, which can have two outcomes. If you have this one outcome, you go to this process step. If the outcome is, for example, no, you go to this process step. In this process step, a couple of documents are produced. And then we go to another decision step and so on. Another way of showing uh, processes is using tables with, for example, in the first column of the table, what happens? So the actual process steps, then who is responsible and maybe also what types of procedures are used or what types of instructions need to be followed in the third column. Now, very practically, where do we put our processes? Where do we store them? Well, this can be actually anywhere, anywhere you like. They are made to visualize how work needs to be done. You can, for example, include uh, process flow charts or process uh, tables in the quality manual to at the beginning of each chapter of the quality manual to visualize the overall process of that chapter. For example, if the chapter is about equipment management, you can include a process flow chart on how you manage the equipment in the laboratory at the start of that chapter. You can also include processes at the start of each SOP to visualize uh, the procedures, uh, the procedural steps of that SOP in a flow chart, just to make it more clear. Then we get to the procedures. In the laboratory, we have standard operating procedures. Now, often you get the question when you are implementing a quality management system, which SOPs do I need to write? Well, I would say first start by going through the ISO 15189 quality standards, because this standard contains a lot of the requirements starting with the sentence, the laboratory shall have a documented procedure for. Just mark these sentences and at the end, write down, make a list of all, uh, all the requirements, all the requirement, uh, required documents uh, of ISO 15189. By that way, you already have a big list of SOPs that you need to write for certain procedures. In addition to that, you need to have SOPs. You need to standardize to document all the critical processes in the laboratory. And critical means if the process doesn't go well or is not performed, the quality of our laboratory services or our laboratory's results is compromised. If that's the case, you need to document that procedure in a standard operating procedure or SOP. And that means that, for example, you need to have SOPs of all the individual process steps here. Because if one step isn't going, is going well, if you don't collect the proper sample, then of course the quality of the final laboratory uh, result or the laboratory service is not assured any longer. So you need to have an SOP on sample collection. The same, for example, on sample preparation. If you use, if you use the incorrect preparation procedure, the examination cannot be done properly. And then, of course, also the result of the laboratory cannot be quality assured. So you can imagine you have to write many different SOPs and many different types of SOPs. So there are many uh, categories of SOPs, actually. 
you can uh, think about this yourself. Uh, ISO 15189 doesn't give you fixed or required categories of SOPs, but these are a couple of examples of uh, types of SOPs that you'd have in a laboratory. You can have general procedures, for example, an SOP on cleaning the laboratory. Uh, you can have SOPs on equipment use and maintenance. You can have SOPs on examinations, or you should have SOPs for examinations, for all the different examinations performed in the laboratory. There are also SOPs for safety and security procedures, and uh, SOPs for specific management procedures. For example, how do we do a management review? An SOP on management review. Now, procedures should also be controlled. We need to have a document control system in the laboratory. And ISO 15189 requires that all documents should include a title, a unique identifier or a code on each page, page of the document, a date of the current edition and uh, or an edition number, a version number, the page number to the total number of pages. So for example, page one of five or page two of five. And it should also uh, has an, have an indication that this document is approved by uh, a specific authority of the laboratory management. So the signature of the laboratory manager indicating that this is an approved and uh, 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 authorized document used in the laboratory. Now ISO 15189 only specifies what should be included in procedures for examination. It doesn't uh, specify what needs to be included in SOPs for equipment or any other type of SOP. It doesn't also, it neither specifies which type of SOP you need to have, uh, what should be included in uh, different types of SOPs, uh, uh, doesn't specify which outline you need to follow, and also it doesn't require you anything about uh, the layout. This is to make the ISO 15189 applicable to all different types of laboratories. Now let's go through the requirements of ISO 15189 related to procedures for examinations. Procedures for examinations, SOPs uh, on examination procedures should include a description of the purpose of an examination, uh, the principle and the method, performance characteristics, the type of sample used for the examination or the type of samples, uh, instructions on patient uh, preparation, the type of the container and any additives that uh, needs to be used, uh, the equipment and reagents that are necessary for this examination procedure, environmental and safety controls, uh, calibration procedures, uh, procedural steps itself. So this is the actual procedure for conducting the examination with also quality control steps. Uh, possible interferences and uh, cross reactions uh, the procedure for calculating the results and the measurement uncertainty, biological uh, reference intervals, and what to do when the result is not within uh, this interval, within the measurement interval. It should also include uh, alert or critical values, if applicable, the interpretation, the method of interpretation of the result, possible sources of variation, and of course the references underlying uh, this examination procedure. So, how do we write the SOP? Well, I would say start writing SOPs with uh, a master SOP. Write a master SOP first before you start writing any other type of SOP. Because the master SOP is really the SOP of SOPs, the standard operating procedure for writing SOPs in the laboratory. Now, the master SOP should include templates for all types of SOPs that are used in the laboratory. Should you start from scratch? Well, I would not recommend to do that. I would really first recommend you to have a look around. You are not the first uh, laboratory to implement a quality management system. There are many laboratories that are, have already gone through this process. And when you go on the internet, you can find many examples and templates of SOPs also for medical laboratories. In addition, I would like to introduce you to uh, a tool developed by the World Health Organization the Laboratory Quality Stepwise Implementation Tool. You can find it, uh, it's a web-based tool. You can find it uh, following this URL, uh, extranet.who.int slash LQSI, Laboratory Quality Stepwise Implementation. And this tool 
divides the process of implementing a quality management system into uh, a roadmap for day-to-day uh, -day implementation of a quality management system, so really into small steps. The whole process for implementing a quality management system is divided into four different phases. And um, what you this is an example, this is a screenshot of the LQSI tool. If you click on uh, phase one, you get a roadmap like this, different steps. Now here you see step number three, make procedures for all tests. If you click on that with your mouse, you get a list of activities to make procedures for all tests. And among these, you see write a master SOP. Now this is also a link, when you click on it, you get to a full activity describing why you need to have a master SOP, what it is, and how exactly you need to write it, and also which position in the laboratory is most suited to do this. And the nice thing about the LQSI tool is also that it provides background information uh, and also a lot of templates uh, for uh, different documents. For example, here you see the template master SOP. Now, if you click on that, you get a Word document that you can use for developing your own master SOP. You can introduce your own uh, logo in, um, in this template. Here you see uh, all the details that ISO 15189 requires to be included in an SOP. So the code, the version number, uh, the date on which it was authorized, uh, which it should be reviewed, the number of pages, and the authority approving uh, this SOP. And here you have an example of an outline which you can adapt yourself as you see fit. Aside from that, the SOP, uh, the LQSI tool, I'm sorry, helps you to uh, write many other types of SOPs. For example, here in phase one, in these two steps, you have uh, write an SOP for sample collection, write an SOP for document control, SOP for sample reception, uh, SOP for procurement and reception of equipment, and SOP for external quality assessment procedures, and so on. So just go to this tool, have a look around, get yourself familiar with the tool, because it's really a valuable source assisting you also to develop SOPs in your laboratory. Now going back to the different types of documents that we have in the laboratory, the policies, the processes and procedures, how are they related? Now again, policies explain what to do in a very broad and general way. Processes explain how it happens and procedures explain how to do each individual step of the process. And I always like to visualize the relation between these three uh, categories of documents by the picture of a tree. Policies are really the root, the foundation of the organization. They really provide the framework on how we are going or what we are going to do in this laboratory. Then we have the stem of the tree and all the branches. And these are the processes explaining how this happens in the laboratory, how it happens. And then all the leaves of the tree are the nitty gritty details which are included in the procedures, the SOPs. So you go from a very low level of detail in the policies to a very high level of detail in the procedures. Now, why are documents important? Again, I have already said this, the key role in implementing a quality management system or having a, uh, doing the laboratory work is to write what you do and do as you have written. Actually, documents are a reflection of the laboratory's uh, organization and its quality management system. When you implement a quality management system, you actually do this two times at the same time, once on paper and once in practice. You write how it should happen in documents, the description of the quality management system, and the practice should be in line with what is documented, so the implementation of the quality management system. Now, a couple of important notes. SOPs need to be available at the point of use and they need to be regularly reviewed because this, the practice, especially in the laboratory, which is a very rapidly developing field, tends to change over time. So you need to regularly review your documents to see if that what is written in the documents is still in line with what happens in practice. And if not, you need to revise your documents. Now, and to do all that, to achieve all that, you need a document control system. And I will be talking about a document control system in another webcast, which you can find on this channel, which has the title, um, how to implement an effective document and information management system. 
for now. Important points to remember of this webcast is that all critical procedures, uh, processes and procedures in the laboratory need to be documented to ensure consistency, uh, accuracy and reliability, and by that quality. Uh, that there are different types of documents, policies, processes and procedures. Policies explain what to do, the overall intent, and when you implement the quality management system, you need to develop a quality policy, which you need to include in a quality manual. Processes explain or visualize how it happens and uh, when. And procedures are the step-by-step -step instructions on performing a single activity um, and the procedures are documented in SOPs, Standard Operating Procedures. Now, uh, documents are a reflection of the organization's or uh, uh, the laboratory's organization and its quality management system. And a key rule to follow is write what you do and do it as you have written. Now, good luck with developing all your documents in your laboratory. And thank you for watching this webcast.